but that 88 is pulling away. Earnhardt, Johnson, Menard, Blaney, third generation star, Dale Earnhardt Jr. Brings him to the flag, checkered flag, waving, it's over, it's Earnhardt. Earnhardt trying to cover all oh, spots. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Good job, June Buck. Woo. Dale Earnhardt Jr. Woo. Checkered flag at Talladega. Why is this one so much fun? Because your grin told so many stories on your cooldown lap. It's just real emotional. I haven't won here in a long time. It's my daddy's birthday a couple days ago. It's just real emotional, man. Uh, my nerd grown. And welcome to it. Glad that you are with the Dale Jr. Race Preview Podcast again this week after taking a week off, the first week off of this new season. And I don't know about you, man, but it felt like an eternity. It felt like the off season, especially if you're a Dale Earnhardt Jr. fan, because that's the unfortunate circumstance when you've got a car that potentially could win the race. You have other idiot drivers that go and cause an issue for your driver, and the best that your driver can do is walk away with an an 11th at a track where we're trying to get our first win, and we head into an off weekend, which is what happened. And that off weekend ends up feeling like an eternity. I am your host, uh, John Justice, and we're heading to Martinsville this weekend, a track that historically... I haven't been a very big fan of, but I've grown to love it over the years. Um, in no small part to Dale Jr.'s success at Martinsville, but I've also come to appreciate the short track racing more. I mean, I still prefer. Um, I'm I'm the weirdo that likes the cookie cutter mile and a half racetracks. I just like the type of racing that those types of tracks produce, and following the races and watching those races. And I love the restrictor plate races, don't get me wrong. <clears throat> but again, with the restrictor plate races, you know, that's kind of you're just holding on to your seat for three hours waiting for the, you know, the checkered flag to be thrown. Uh, when it comes down to the short tracks, I, I like them, but I'm a big fan of the speed. I've really come to appreciate Martinsville and enjoy the race for what it is uh, over the course of the past few years. And it's becoming a race that I actually do look forward to. And I like how it's positioned as the first race after an off weekend, too, after the start of the season. Because, and again, this is just me personally. Going into it, I'm so hungry to watch NASCAR again that I don't really care where the heck they're they're racing at. And I'm excited about this weekend. I'm excited about Dale Jr.'s chances. The car looks really good, despite not qualifying the best again. But the car looks really solid. So we'll get into all that coming up. I do want to recap Fontana a little bit. Uh, Talk about Dale Jr. making some national news in his decision and going public with his decision to donate his brain to concussion research um, in the event of his of his untimely passing or passing. And that's a tough one, man. I, and we'll talk a little bit about that. There's some new merchandise specifically available at uh, DaleJr.com that we'll discuss. And then we'll talk a little bit about Martinsville. And I'll give you my prediction. But uh, based off of what I've seen in practice so far today, I am really, really excited. So let's just go back to Fontana for, for just a moment. A lot of hype around Fontana leading into uh, Auto Club Speedway with the Batman versus uh, Superman Dawn of Justice promotion that was going on between Dale Jr. and Jimmy Johnson. Uh, It's frustrating when you have a really cool, interesting promotion that I felt was even more enjoyable than the movie itself was. But if you want my thoughts on Batman versus Superman Dawn of Justice, I did record a... a, uh, a movie review podcast of that. It's available on the uh, at the John Justice Show, My Nerd World, up on iTunes and on Podbean as well. But um, oh, and at MyNerdWorld.com, we got to talk about that. As a matter of fact, I'm going to write that down before I forget because I never talk about the website. So the promotion I thought was better. I loved the car. I talked about that in the last podcast. But it's frustrating when you've got a cool promotion like that and it's Batman versus Superman and the person that you're competing against in the promotion ends up going and stealing the race. He did kind of steal the race. Again, I think Dale Jr., if he hadn't gotten caught up with 
Kurt Busch driving like a moron, uh, he would have had an opportunity to get up there and vie for the win. And I, I just want to bring that up briefly because it's one of those circumstances where I watched the whole thing happen live. I think they were on commercial break. And, you know, I'm watching on race view. And you can see on race view, you know, when, when, when the guy runs the high line at – at Fontana, at Auto Club Speedway, in turns three and four, and the guy takes the low line, usually that guy on the high line, as long as they hit the mark, is going to have a ton of momentum coming off the corner. And Dale Jr., I've seen, seen that happen, like a couple of laps leading up to when the incident happened with Kurt Busch, uh, you know, the guys diving the bottom were not able, I mean, they were going into the corner faster, but Dale Jr. was coming off the corner so fast, he was just flying down the front stretch. And so I'm watching Kurt Busch, and I'm seeing him slide up, and I'm watching this on the race view, and I'm going, okay, you can stop now, you can stop now, you can stop now. And sure enough, he just cut Dale Earnhardt Jr. right off. And I don't know if they ever clarified whether or not the spotter cleared him, because if he did, he clearly should not have cleared him. I mean, Dale Jr. had to slam on the brakes and still ended up plowing into the back of, of Kurt Busch. And it's just one of those racing moments where you're early in the race. It's unnecessary, even if you are vying for the spot and you're going to force the guy behind you to slow down. I mean, I'll even give you that much. You know, if you're later in the race, you're trying to go for the win, you've got the guy on the high line cleared, even though he's got the momentum. You know, all right, you know, all's fair and love and racing, right? I'll give it to you. But we're, you know, what, 30 laps in? And you're going to go and pull a move like that when the guy on the high line clearly has the advantage? And that just, I mean, that tanked our day. Screwed the front of the car up, uh, messed up the splitter. They had to spend a ton of time um, on, on pit road getting the whole thing fixed up. And even then, they were able to go and fight back for a almost a top 10 finish, which was pretty unbelievable. But it's just so tough when you... You have a car like that and at a track where you know you can probably win or you got a really, really good opportunity and you end up having to play catch up all, all day long, you know, and then you go and you back it up to the previous races and it's like, oh man, we just haven't, the cars are good, qualifying's awful, I don't know what's going on with qualifying, the cars are good, we've just got to go and get things to to fall our way. And I think that this weekend's a good opportunity uh, for that. So, you know, the race was enjoyable. It, there's a certain level of, there's like a, you know, I don't know about you, but when I'm watching the race and I'm watching my driver and I'm following everything and listening to the in car, it just changes the dynamic. You know, you're, you're, you're watching it with the intention of wanting to see Dale Jr. go for the win and then you get in a circumstance like that where the car gets messed up. They've got to work on it. They've got to play catch up. And now it's like, okay, let's see and we'll pay attention to and really chalk this race up to how, you know, how good of a finish can we get even despite all the problems. So it just, it just ends up creating a different sort of viewing experience than cheering the guy on. You know, you're not really cheering on for 10th place. You know, you want to cheer on for the win. In this case, it's like, all right, guys, let's see what you're made of. Let's see how, how you know, how, how much you can make this race still, uh, you know, come out with a, with a positive. And they did. And races like this are important, especially when it comes to Dale Jr. When we get later into the season and we're in the middle of the, you know, in the thick of the chase or, and well, really in the thick of the chase and you get circumstances like this where every position and every point matters because right now we just need to get a win. You know, this type of race is going to come in handy in terms of being able to go back and, and learn from, you know, okay, how did you go and rise to the challenge on a weekend where you got a guy like Kurt Busch who goes and does a, does a really, really stupid move and jacks up your car? All right, uh, let me move over to merchandise, and then we'll talk a bit about the story of Dale Jr. and the concussions, and then we'll um, we'll get into into Martinsville a bit. Really excited about. Uh, can't wait for that race tomorrow. Um, First off, if you uh, if you go to DaleJr.com, not a whole lot of new stuff over at uh, NASCAR.com. I was checking it out. I didn't see any new T-shirts. Uh, you know, they had the big push for the Batman and Superman stuff, and so there really wasn't anything new there. Uh, this is kind of cool though. At um, at the official store for Dale Jr. Uh, ShopJrNation.com, uh, Under Armour has put out some official team hats, 
And I really like these. It's got the Tax Slayer, the Mountain Dew, which we still haven't seen the paint scheme for, by the way. Um, Exalta and Nationwide. I really dig these hats, though, because they, they're really clean. I mean, they're just, you know, the, the plain, you know, blue, uh, kind of a, kind of a, I guess it's almost black for the Exalta, the green and the red, with just the, the sponsor logos, and on the sides it'll have Under Armour, Hendrix, and the 88. I just like the really clean look of them. I like the I like the stuff the official team wears, and so I thought that was cool. There's also, if you're into sort of doing that thing with my fingers, other Dale Jr. gear, other than his uh, Sprint Cup-inspired stuff, there are new uh, Whiskey River items available, and it looks like new Junior Motorsports um, items available as well. You know, more stylish um, than, you know, what you get with the standard sort of Sprint Cup fare. So if you go to, and Junior Motorsports has those same types of Under Armour hats available uh, as well. So if you go to shopjuniornation.com, if you're looking for um, some new merchandise, you can get uh, you can get those items. But again, in terms of Sprint Cup uh, gear, I'm not really seeing uh, anything, uh, anything new today. So, was this last week? Early in the week? It was early in the week. It would have been early. Um... You know, the story pops up. I'm on Facebook at work, and actually I have two different I have two different work stories as it relates to today's podcast. But I'm at work and I see on Facebook on my trending topics that Dale Earnhardt Jr. is trending. And I was like, well, okay, what's Dale, you know, what's I mean, it's one thing when you're looking at NASCAR stuff, you always see Dale Earnhardt Jr. stories. But to see him sort in national news, that's a little bit different. So I you know, I I I go and I look and Dale Jr. made national news, inspired by Brandy Chastain, NFL players, to uh, donate brain for concussion research. Already an advocate of concu- uh, concussion research, Earnhardt was recently aspired to pledge his brain to science. I'm not going to lie. This is one of those stories that's kind of tough to read. Being a fan of a driver, specifically a fan of Dale Earnhardt Jr., and then when you consider how dangerous the sport is, when you consider what happened to his father, this is one of those stories It's kind of like, ooh. You know, I'm not a believer in, I'm not superstitious, right? I'm a, uh, I'm a Christian. I believe all things happen for a reason. So I don't believe that just because Dale Earnhardt Jr. did this story, it's a bad omen about donating his brain to research. But it's tough. You know, you don't ever want to think of your driver like that. You don't want to think of your driver getting hurt. You don't want to think of the consequences of what could happen, you know, if that were to take place. And so I read the story, and there was a part of me that went, you know, knowing what it was just off the headline was like, oh, do I really want to read this? But I did, and I'm glad I did, because it really goes to further cement um, or give even another reason why Dale Earnhardt Jr. is my favorite driver. And just he as a person, right? Um, he was perusing his Twitter feed, Dale Earnhardt Jr. was, when he noticed a story about three former Oakland Raiders players who had pledged their brains to concussion research in the honor of their late teammate, Ken Stabler. Already an organ donor, a strong proponent of concussion research, having suffered to himself, Earnhardt became inspired and amazed by the gesture of the Raiders players and Brandy Chastain, the U.S. women's soccer player, who recently made the same pledge. In a spur-of-the-moment decision, Earnhardt um, then posted a tweet stating that he would do the same and began researching uh, the study of head injuries further uh, an announcement uh, further and an, has an inflection fail there sorry began researching the study of head injuries further an announcement that ended up making uh, national uh, national news uh, he reaffirmed that promise when he spoke with the media friday at uh, martinsville speedway he said uh, i just thought uh, that was amazing that these guys did that in honor of their teammate. I read where Brandy had done that maybe a month ago, Earnhardt said, and that just really, um, and that was just really inspiring. I saw someone mention, I don't even know uh, what the context of the tweet was, re- responding, um, I was responding was. I didn't expect it to turn into the story that it did, but by all means, if it raises more awareness and inspires people to donate their brains and pledge their brains, we don't, um, they don't need just athlete, uh, athletes, they need uh, everybody. 
You know, and that's what always cracks me up about Dale Jr. is that he he he's so unassuming about.